This is a, a rain gauge, and as one might imagine, I would like to mount it on the outside of my house for it to be useful. Um, on the outside of my house is an old chunk of metal that was left over probably to tie down an old TV antenna at some point. And I think it's gonna be ideal to reuse this as the mounting point for my rain gauge. What this video will be about basically is doing a functional design of a 3D print and getting it out as quickly as possible and uh, making sure it works on first pass printing because uh, I'm very much interested in using my 3D printer to produce useful parts as quickly as possible. So I'm going to model this part up at OpenSCAD. It's got three big advantages. Uh, the first one is actually free, uh, which is a great choice. Uh, the second one, quite frankly, um, it's a really well suited to designing mechanical parts. It speaks the language of mathematics, which of course uh, is the language of engineering and the language of design. So very appropriate. And third, quite frankly, uh, it represents a whole class of parametric modelers. And if you can learn OpenSCAD, quite frankly, uh, you can lay the foundations for using much more complicated tools. So the key to get something first for past success is to model up the critical mechanical dimensions and check they work before you get too far down trying to print the whole thing. Uh, obviously a very trivial thing here. This is basically a, a 7 by 40 millimeter cutout here, which is just a touch bigger than what I measured that metal bracket to be. I'll print this out in one pass and uh, we'll use it then to sort down... Um, if it works or not. Uh, as you can see here, it has a 3 minute and 10 second time on it. Here's the metal bracket, and I've slipped over that little 3D part uh, we had in the model there. Uh, of course, it took three minutes to print. Uh, it slides up and down quite well. Um, but more importantly, if it didn't slide up and down, it would only be a few more minutes to correct the problem and create a new part. If I got this dimension wrong and I started building around it and I had to recover, um, I could end up with this part would take hours to print and then it wouldn't work. So the technique here, uh, make sure that you check all the dimensions with the simplest possible part. Okay, so here's the mounting ring, and there's uh, obviously three uh, places where you need to drive a fastener. Uh, now, of course, we need to replicate this pattern on the printed part, so of course it lines up. Uh, now, you may think just to easily take your caliper and uh, try to measure between the holes, but it's actually relatively difficult, at least I find it very difficult, to get it absolutely perfect. Um, a better technique I've found is to try to project the holes onto a, a flat piece of paper. Uh, and of course, I'm just simply uh, trying to sketch it out with a pencil uh, to get where the holes are. And then coming back with the, uh, the caliper and uh, measuring the holes, I find that uh, I get less uh, chance of uh, making a small miss on uh, the holes. The hole tolerance will be probably plus or minus half a millimeter. And so a millimeter error in measurement uh, could be a, a bit too much. So now that I've got it projected down, uh, I can actually see, of course, uh, where the circle is. Now that I've got the three holes uh, just uh, sketched out, then I can take my caliper and uh, be fairly precise in finding out where it is, uh, center to center. Uh, now, uh, it looks like it's 85 millimeters uh, and 85 millimeters, so of course we all have an equilateral triangle if I was to draw this dimension here because they're all 85 millimeters on the side. And then from there, it's fairly easy to do some math uh, to sort down the distance from the center here to this hole here. And it's going to increment at 120 degrees uh, around the circle and uh, calculate this distance, a little bit of trigonometry, and then we can put it into the CAD program. Okay, so uh, I print a part, just again, the spirit of doing the fast prototype. Uh, rather than wasting a lot of parts, I build the smallest structure I can, which has the holes in the right position, or at least what I'd hope to be the right position. And then I can quickly check to see that I've actually got it right. Now, uh, so far I'm batting 100%, so also this ring appears to be good on first try. Um, powerful technique. Uh, don't try to print uh, the whole thing at once and have to redo it all. Print the smallest piece you can when you're trying to make sure you have the critical dimensions correct. Okay, the final bit that I got to model to make sure I know the physical dimensions is a little cutout for the nut. Uh, the bolt here will come up from the uh, the white base and come through. And then I want to have a little recess here that uh, will hold the nut and uh, allow the bolt to be tightened down. The next thing I check, of course, is a, a diagram on uh, metric nuts. This is an M4 nut I'll be using. Uh, and it tells me nominally the uh, distance across here is called the dimension E. Coming down, it's around uh, 7.6 to 8.1 millimeters. So 
Uh, model that in CAD really quickly, and OpenSCAD actually allows you to model bolts and nuts uh, very easily by using a trick uh, revolving around how it renders uh, circles. So here's the file. It's only two lines long, basically. Uh, to model the nut, I basically uh, model a cylinder. I have a height of three. The nut's about two and a half millimeters uh, deep. But then I use this a function fn dollar sign equals six. So basically, a, a nut of course has uh, six uh, faces to it. And to model those fixed faces, I basically tell it uh, to use six faces to try to render a cylinder, which of course makes a hexagon. Diameter 8.5. Of course, I model it slightly larger. And then for the actual M.4 uh, hole that I need for the actual bolt, uh, I model it an extra half a millimeter is generally is a very successful, gives you a nice reasonable fit for a metric nut. So you go a couple lines basically, and then I can drop this uh, module into um, my master CAD file. It's, it's a very fast way of modeling uh, uh, bolts in uh, OpenSCAD without having to do okay, complicated. Again, in the spirit of rapidly prototyping it, I then uh, drop that modeled nut into a very small cube. Uh, so I just modeled the, uh, just the barest of the uh, bolt's diameter, and then of course the nut. This takes uh, 2 minutes and 21 seconds to print, so I can obviously dash it off quickly and uh, make sure I've got things set up properly. Okay, a little less uh, luck with the uh, making, making a part so the nut fits in correctly. You can see I had to print it four times, but uh, each print only takes 2 minutes and 21 seconds, so uh, I was able to rapidly iterate, uh, and that's the power of the technique. So I, I now basically have the right dimensions set up for my printer so that the nut will fit in correctly. I got a part here that uh, I'm confident it'll slide over that metal bracket correctly. And I'm also confident now that I've modeled the mounting bracket that came with the rain gauge with the right uh, screw hole. So now I'm only half an hour into the design basically. I know all the critical dimensions. I know, I'm have to know, I know that I'm not going to have to revisit them. So um, I can now proceed with the main body of the uh, structure. Okay, let's put it all together. Uh, so I need a bracket that slides with a metal. And that's module bracket as you can see shown here. Uh, very straightforward, you just model up a cube, 13 millimeters by 46 millimeters by 125 millimeters, then you blow a couple of openings into it, uh, basically to slide over that post here. You have a cube which matches the dimensions I had tried out earlier, and that's fine. I don't go all the way through, because basically I don't want rain coming down uh, through the gauge. And then, because the bracket has a, a hole on it, so I want to be able to screw it down, uh, I just uh, model a cylinder, which is 4.1 millimeters uh, in diameter, and then I translate it uh, so it rotates through. So I now have a bracket. The round top, obviously, likewise, is easy to make. Uh, it's basically a cylinder, which is 116 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters thick. 10 millimeters is a good uh, compromise. If I want to make it too thin, I find if I build things that are too thin that get in, up in the sun in my house, they tend to warp fairly easily. So I know 10 millimeters is usually pretty good. Uh, and then here on the bottom you can see the places for the nuts and those of course just are those ones that we had uh, spoke about earlier we modeled m4 captive nut and then you just simply translate those locations and here's a little bit of mathematics i'm speaking about to put the holes in the right point uh, basically you just calculate uh, the cosine of 30 multiply it by 42 and a half uh, which is half of 85 and of course it drops those bolts beautifully exactly where they need to be Next step, as one might imagine, is you want to get the uh, top piece connected to the uh, bit that slides on that metal bracket. Uh, that's just modeled as basically uh, 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 putting two things together. You just uh, render the bracket and then you render the top in the right location. Uh, this, of course, is a relatively weak structure. It basically only connects here uh, at the... Uh, I guess I should flip it around to the right orientation. It only uh, connects here, which is going to flap in the wind a little bit because, uh, you know, strong wind. Don't want that. So we have to strengthen this with a strut. Okay, so add in the strut. Uh, the strut here uh, is shown basically, it's modeled as a polygon uh, with dimensions on it. So you just draw what you want. Um, and then it's linearly extruded by 10. And then, of course, it's just slapped onto the assembly. So uh, power of uh, OpenSCAD. So here's the whole assembly ready to go. Um, I'm now about an hour into the design, so I, I did this on a Saturday morning, so I now have the design I want. Um, I'm only an hour into it, and I will drop this onto my printer, and uh, I will get uh, first pass success. I'll be able to drop this into uh, 
my house. I'll off do some garden work here and I'll come back to the video in about three and a half hours and uh, make sure it all looks great. Okay, here's the final product. Yeah, the base is now mounted on the bracket. Uh, I still need to trim the screws. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but basically this slides over that metal post um, and then this uh, ring gauge comes down and there's a locking next to me. Turn it. It makes a nice little half lock. Okay, I'm just going to shorten this nut here. I'll obviously have it in the vise. I've got it being held by the two nuts here. You don't want to hold a bolt uh, by its threads because that would damage it. Uh, also really handy when you t uh, back these nuts off after you cut the threads. It'll tend to chase the threads and clean them up so you don't have to use a, a die to clean them. And then just simply a, a hacksaw. Uh, it's uh, one of many ways of shortening a bolt, certainly one I, I favor. There we have it. All nicely mounted and ready to measure the rain coming this fall. Okay, if you want to take a look at the code, you'll find it on electronupdate.blogspot.com. You will not find this to be a very remarkable code. It's a real meatball coding style. Uh, I'm very much interested in results. I'm never going to revisit this file, quite frankly. It's very typical of the functional print I do in my home. Once I've got something to work uh, and it generates fine, the only time I'm going to revisit this is perhaps if I want to reprint it. I do find using very simple coding standards and styles, which don't involve a lot of libraries, uh, usually are most, the most maintainable files uh, that I do. So... I hope you found it of interest. Uh, if so, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.